Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but a means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy YouTube, you find that a lot of the content you like to watch is very visually engaging, and you're several hours into watching videos, and you haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in, or at least that's where I try to come in. So thanks! Actually, we have a few new subscribers, so hello there! Thank you for subscribing and enjoying the content that I have here. Um, this video is part of my Knit Ahead for the Holiday series in which I push myself to finish working on all of my projects I have lined up to give to friends and family for the holiday season. And here it is, um, the second week in October now, and I still have a ways to go. Not too far, but I'm getting there. I actually um, have a timestamp below because for the first part I'm going to talk about the Tempestry project which is not part of the holiday series, but it is a project that is for a, uh, is a gift to some um, relatives, and I just finished it. So I wanted to talk about that with you guys. Instead of making it a separate video because it's not as long, um, I thought I would tack it onto this one and see what happens. So you'll see a video clip um, here. I'll try editing um, God's Permitted uh, to insert a small video just showing you guys what the finished project look like, looks like. I just posted it to Instagram um, this afternoon. I'm so happy with how it turned out considering the struggles that I've had with it. Um, if you guys have watched my Tempestry project videos then you know that I struggled with figuring out how to turn the work so I ended up not doing that and just knitting every row front and back and um, cutting off the ends. And what I realized is that I actually have a lot of yarn left over. One moment. So in this bag, I have all of the remaining balls of yarn from the project that I didn't use um, with knitting. So the Tempestry Project kit that you buy, if you do choose to do what I did and buy the kit off of their Etsy site that has all the yarn measured out, um, you actually get quite a lot. Um, I just did the garter stitch, so I'm not sure how much I would have had left over if I did the linen stitch, which is also a way you can uh, knit this project. But since I just did garter, I have a lot of yarn left over. And originally I thought that I would just tie on, uh, because when I started out, I didn't know if I would have enough yarn to continue to leave these loose strands because the kit, um, or at least the pattern guide, uh, says knit with circulars so that you can always knit on the showing side and I couldn't figure that out as I mentioned so um, with cutting off the ends I started out just cutting a teeny tiny bit off and then tying each piece together to the next row so I wouldn't unravel it by accident and the further along in the project I realized I still had a lot of yarn left for each color so I kept I made the, um, each end a little longer a little longer until I had about two to three inches on each side left that I could weave in and that was plenty. Um, I was able to weave in maybe like an inch more into the work and cut off the excess which I kind of show in the video that I'm flipping over in the back to kind of give you guys a visual of what that looks like. Um, so the back is like total trash <laughs> like it's ugly but you're it's going to be hanging on a wall flat so you only see the pretty front side. And I'm looking at it right now as it's hanging on my wall just to kind of get an idea of what it looks like when it's in its final resting stage. And I can start kind of see some of the, the little bits peek, peeking out from the side. So if you look at it um, at an angle, you can kind of see some of those ends. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just pat them down a little more so that when I fold it up and package it and send it off, it'll be all nice and flat by the time they get it. Um, but right now they're kind of bent. Funny. Um, but I think with folding them and having the weight of the fabric on top of each other will help keep those flat until until it reaches its destination. And yeah, I ended up um, dipping each end of the dowel rod that I used um, in some acrylic metallic paint that I had left over from last year's projects I was working on, and I added some beads to the um, the string that, that's going to hold it um, on the nail in the wall with uh, some leftover beads from last year's projects as well. Um, keeping the spirit of not wasting stuff in mind, um, if I can, I try to incorporate other materials that I already have 
instead of going out and buying new ones if I don't need to. So I'm glad I had those handy just to kind of add a little bit more of an embellishment to it. I thought about adding fringe to the bottom of the Tempestry project, but um, I don't have enough of the green yarn because there are only a couple really cold days in Borney, Texas, so they didn't give us much green yarn. And I wanted to keep it green because I thought adding another color to the bottom would just kind of clash, at least in my taste. Um, I didn't want to do that, so I left the bottom plain and just added the beads to the top part that's holding um, the string on the rod. Um, so other than that, next time I'm going to spend some more time learning how to turn the work so that all of the days of the year are facing the same way without other colors starting on the wrong side of the work. Um, but visually, it looks very nice. I'm very pleased with how it came out, so I'm happy about that. So. I'm going to take a moment to uh, let whatever video just played stop, but I think it was only just a few <laughs> moments of that. So uh, timestamp, of course, uh, is where the knitting begins. If you had watched all the way to this point, you probably are already ready for the knitting part where we go on about the date. So let me scoot back. All right, so um, for today's project, I am just working on a simple vanilla sock. Um, I'm still working on another pair of Ray Light socks and those are for my partner. And I decided to just do something simple with a very colorful yarn for my brother's fiance. Um, she is a size nine shoe and the pattern I'm knitting is a woman's eight and a half, but I'm using larger needles than what's described in the pattern, so I think that'll give me a little bit of leeway for stretch and everything like that. And I'm not knitting terribly tight, so I think it'll fit her foot quite well. Um, but I'm going to link in the description to the Ravelry pattern I found. However, it does link to an internet archive site of the DIY network, and the pattern itself on here is called um, something. I think it's, it just says how to knit a sock. <laughs> um, and I think it's called like sock recipe or something like that. So it's very simple, but it's just a plain knit, normal knit sock, cuff down. But the thing I did differently was I added a, um, a Pico, Pico stitch, uh, Pico cast on to the edge. Um, so that it has like this, um, try to, okay, I could pull it up to my hair and you can see the difference because I have a lot of colors on, so it's kind of like hard to see, but you can see these little like ridges here. So it's kind of like just a little, little bumps around the, the cuff, the top of the cuff. So that makes it really nice. And I'll link to, um, Hello Ugly Bunny. Um, her tutorial is what I used to get, um, this cuff the way it is. Um, I follow her on Instagram and I actually sneak peek or spoiler alert. I bought some yarn from her. She'd also dyes yarn and I have it with me, but I am deciding on if I want to show you guys an entire birthday purchase haul or if I want to wait till it's, uh, or like do piece by piece. So I think I can do a poll here. Um, depending on how many results I get, if you guys feel like participating. Um, if you want to see what I have so far, and then as thing, as the rest trickle in, I can make two separate videos, or just, you know, whenever I'm done getting them, maybe do one big one, where you see it all at once. Um, but I do have several packages already here of things that I did get to purchase for my September birthday month. Wait and see if anybody has suggestions for me, and then... Uh, for October, I had made the purchases so that I plan to review, or not even review really, because it's going to take a long time to use a lot of this stuff, like yarn, knitting, um, but at least talk and show you guys what I got and what I think of everything. But um, I did have to open some things as I needed them for uh, the Tempestry project, like finishing it, but for the most part, everything looks good. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead. Um, so, as I showed you the Pico um, edge for the cast on, 
I am knitting with a striped sock weight yarn and this was actually gifted to me by my coworker who gave me a lot of yarn and a lot of pattern books and I believe I, guys, I told you guys about her before several times but I'm always grateful because I didn't have to buy any, I, was, I have a lot of sock yarn now as you guys have seen from other videos of purchases I've made but at least a cool interesting like stripey yarn self-striping that I could use for a plain sock, but it will add some pizzazz to it with the color work. Um, so this is Plymouth Italian Collection. I think there's like a label covering up part of the name, but it looks like it's Sock Saccata. And it's, let's see, the whole uh, ball here is 414 yards. It's machine washable, made in Italy, and it's 45% cotton, 40% superwash wool, and 15% nylon. So I think that seems pretty uh, durable to me. Um, so we already did the heel flap and we are knitting the foot part here. And I have to do something. Uh, it's been a couple days since I was knitting with this one, so I have to see where I am. Um, ah, okay, so knit plain all the way around, um, do, 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 repeat rounds one and two until you have 64 stitches divided. Ah, okay, yeah, I, okay, so I got to that part, and now I can continue knitting plain until the sock measures five inches from where I picked up the stitches. So, where I picked up? actually right here because I had the heel I was just knitting the heel then I picked up so I can knit the rest of the foot part so this like little ooh, where's the camera all right so this little ridge right here is where I'm measuring from and you can see I don't have five inches quite yet so this is great knitting for talking with you guys you guys working on your own projects because I don't have to think um, I do have to pay attention to how long this is getting, uh, but for the most part, pretty simple. Um, I can, I can knit in the round. That part I can handle quite well. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, I was actually working on my brother's sock, uh, last night slash early, early, early this morning when I was volunteering at that, at my job for that thing I do. Um, and that, that. I volunteer for is from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. and I usually bring my knitting. Um, after the first day where I was trained and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I was just focused on what I was doing, but now that I have, um, I have volunteered here uh, last night or this morning was my fourth time now, so I'm, I've got the groove down for the most part. So I'm able to knit um, in between when I need to be paying attention. And so I brought my brother's sock that I showed you guys before. It was like the green one with the worsted weight. And I pulled it out of my project bag and there were like three or four stitches just in the middle of the thing that just had fallen off somehow. And I'm like, ah. So for the first part of the night, I was just re-fixing um, those. I didn't have a crochet hook with me or a stitch fix uh, hook, which is just a crochet hook. So I had to just use my DTNs to finagle the yarn back up through the loops that it had slipped through and then continue on there. Um, which actually is a reason why I should have busted out one of the things I bought that's here because it's going to help me a lot with that. And I'm excited to show you guys because I need it. <laughs> but I also need to be more careful with how I store my projects when I'm on the go. But it's so strange because I literally just had the project in my bag and I left my bag on a chair and I hadn't touched it since last week. So I think it might have happened when I pulled it out of the bag, forgetting like how I had it arranged in there. And it was dark. It's kind of dim in the room that I'm in. So that was my, that was my fault. That was my fault. That was totally me, I think, because uh, I was very careful when I put it in there before I left last week and I hadn't touched it since. So it's like, well. Was, I couldn't blame it on my cats because it was out of their reach and the bag hadn't fallen anywhere. So there wasn't any reason for them to have messed with it. 
So I think it was just when I pulled it out that they all fell out. And it was in the middle, so and it was like far down, so it wasn't like I could just rip it out and start over where it was. It was it was in a weird spot. So and I had already made so much progress I really didn't feel like I needed to start over. I could just pull the yarn back through. And that's what I did. Whew. So, um I'm trying to think. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up here. Uh, one, being able to show you guys all the cool things I bought so I can actually use them. Uh, a lot of them are still wrapped in the shipping packages they came in, so I haven't um, touched them except for the stuff that I needed for the uh, Tempestry project. Um, oh, and there was something I bought that's not knitting related, but it's cat related, and I used that when it came in the mail early this week. I think it was... Wednesday it came in and I was just so excited because uh, the notice on Etsy said it would take maybe two to three weeks and it only took about one week um, maybe a week and a half tops but it really wasn't that long at all so I was really pleasantly surprised by how fast it came because it was coming from Thailand and hmm, what else oh I was off of work yesterday which really gave me a chance to finish the tempestry project because I last week I was already for the most part close to being finished knitting and then I finished on the weekend but the whole week I've just been weaving in all of the ends and that was so laborious but thanks to um, YouTube and some true crime series I was watching on net, uh, not Netflix on Amazon Prime I was able just to sit at my desk and knock out weaving in the rest of the ends. I was giving myself goals like, okay, this night I'm just going to weave in the red stuff. And that was a lot. And then this night I'm just going to weave in to where I have a gap where, you know, I've knit several colors and, uh, or at least one color in a row. So I had no ends because it was just kept knitting, knitting, knitting across in the same color. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'll only weave in, uh, the really short ones today and stuff like that. And then, and pretty much all of Friday, uh, I just devoted my day since I had woken up to, to knitting. And I actually got woken up by the postal worker who rang my doorbell. Usually they ring the doorbell and then they just wander away because they're just like, hey, you have something and that's it. But this time they rang the doorbell. And I was kind of in bed. I wasn't like totally asleep, but I was just kind of like there. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I heard a knock and another doorbell ring. And I was like, okay. So then I thought, well, maybe it's not the postal, postal worker. Maybe it's like uh, Grubhub or, you know, some other food delivery service. And because of where I live, my address is shared with several other locations. So unless you specify like where in the vicinity of other areas you are, they usually always just come to my door and then I'm like, nope, sorry, you got the wrong place. Um, so then I was like, well, maybe it's one of those. But then I was like, eh, well, they can figure it out. They can contact the person who had requested the food because I'm not putting on clothes to just go answer the door. So I finally got dressed and came downstairs and then I saw a note on the door. One, I got a package. It was actually um, the package I mentioned from um, Hello Ugly Bunny. Um, very excited. I hadn't opened it yet, but I know what it is. And I got a notice for some other yarn that I bought that was coming from overseas. And I guess they had asked that there be a signature for the package. Well. I don't guess that's what the notice said like there's this authorized signature request and they can't just leave it at the door and I was like oh that hasn't happened to me in a long time and I was really surprised and kind of like kind of sad because it's such a hassle to get to the post office it's not even far from where I live it's just when I can go they're usually closed and I have a very tiny window on Saturdays where I'm here and not at work where I can, you know, go get something. Um, so I looked at the notice and I was like, okay, it's going to be ready by tomorrow, which yesterday's tomorrow was today. So Saturday. And I was like, all right. 
this gives me more motivation to finish the, the tapestry project, like finish weaving in those ends, block it, get it wrapped up, get it ready to go. So then if I go to the post office on Saturday to pick up the package I missed, I can ship this out too. And here it is Saturday, and you see, I just showed you the tapestry project, and I did not go to the post office today. Um, miscommunication with my partner, I assumed they were going to be home this morning, so when I got up around 9.30, uh, I slept in because I got home so late from uh, my volunteer job, and I wanted to check on my tapestry project because before I left, uh, the day before, um, I, I blocked it. I used Flatter Spray by Soak, which is kind of like a, I don't know if it's starch based, but it's supposed to help like smooth wrinkles and stuff like that. And I figured just a little bit of liquid that had like a nice fragrance and a little bit of chemical in it would help to flatten and help me smooth out the Tempestry project so I could form it so it's a little more even. And I didn't want to soak it all the way because of it being a lot of red and some lighter colors, and I didn't know if it would bleed or not. So I didn't want to worry about making it too saturated, colors bleeding, and the fact that if I soaked it, it would take even longer for it to dry. And I didn't want to like ruffle it up too much because of how the ends are sewed in um, or woven in. I didn't know um, if it would hold up with a lot of like rigorous uh, touching. Um, especially like when you squeeze it out instead of wringing it, you know, you roll it in the towel and pat it down and all that And I was like, eh, I don't know So I used the flatter spray and when I got home very early this morning, it was still kind of drying So I was like, okay, I'll wake up early early considering how late I got home uh, Finish it up Like make sure it's blocked and nice wrap it up find a box Which I still need to do because I didn't have any small enough. So I'm gonna have to like fold one down for it and get ready to go. So when I woke up, my partner was already gone for the day. And so I just kept working on my project thinking, well, maybe they'll come back, you know, before noon when the post office closes and they didn't. So I sent them a message and I found out that they did some other stuff this morning and they're still out right now, but I'm just like, okay, well, I won't be able to get my package today. And I won't be able to Monday or Tuesday because they'll be out and about. So what I can do is either try to get it on Wednesday or try to get them to re-deliver it. But if they need somebody to sign, then, well, no, I think the sheet that I have lets me sign the back and that'll count as a signature. So we'll see how desperate I get. If I really can't make it there, then I'll just have them come by again because I really want that package. And, and I think tomorrow, on Sunday, I'll try to go to um, the United Parcel Service, or UPS, and get uh, an estimate on if I could ship it through them, uh, at least the Tempestry Project. Ship it out and make sure it gets to Borney, or not Borney, um, the city I'm knitting for is Borney, but the town they live in is Houston and see if it can get to Houston before they uh, are gone. They're actually, the couple that I'm getting this, giving this gift to are celebrating their anniversary in uh, San, San Francisco or something like that. I think they're going to California. And so um, I don't know exactly when they leave. So I want to make sure they get it before they go. And I'm imagining they're going to, like, spend a long weekend there. So if they get it by Wednesday, that should be okay. Because their, their anniversary is next Sunday. And this month is actually... Uh, the end of this month is my anniversary. Link it in. Uh, my partner and I will be celebrating our 12-year anniversary of living and loving each other for uh, a long time. We met in college and we've just been together ever since. But um, 12 years is a long time. It's not as long as, you know, my parents or other people I know, but I think it's pretty, pretty big deal. 
I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but I have more time off to use. Like I was off Friday. Um, I'm off this upcoming Friday and I have two, one or two more Fridays left and a couple other days because of if you had watched any of my other videos where I was such a, a grumpy pants about my work schedule, <laughs> I had worked 22 days in a row without a day off and I was working late. Um, upwards till 10 o'clock at night or later and that racked up a lot of extra time that I could use so with that I have an opportunity to do two days already and this would be my third and I have um, five more so yeah a lot of days and a lot of Fridays a lot of well, three-day weekend and a four-day weekend coming up so I'm excited that means I get to knit that means I get to talk to you guys. That means I get to work on my projects that I have. And there was something else I was going to say about projects. I guess that, oh yeah, I think because of the fact that I've been working on so many of these for other people that I decided I wanted to save, at least try my best to save some of the really cool yarn I have for myself because I need some more socks. I only have one pair. I haven't blocked them. Well, no, I take that back. I have one pair of like regular socks. Um, and those are the Raylite socks that I knit the first time that you guys saw that I completely fudged. And, um, and then I have another pair of those weekend socks that I'm knitting for my brother that I knit for myself the first time and also fudged <laughs> so but they're wearable they're just not the best looking as my first pair of socks in both pattern styles so I have those but I just think I have more cool yarn that I just bought that I want to use for myself so we'll see if I feel like sharing it with anybody else but I think I mentioned before to you guys that socks, at least right now I'm noticing, they're the quickest thing I can do that's practical and easy for me to give as gifts. Because here I am knitting this one, and I'm pretty, not super, super far in the one that I'm doing for my brother, but I didn't make the, I'm not making the leg part that long, so I can cut that part short. Because they don't really like long socks like tube socks or uh, mid calf socks or anything like that. So I can probably knock those out pretty quickly. And the fact that if I'm doing smaller projects, then I'm not overwhelming myself. And then I have more time to work on my own. And I have so many other things that I have patterns for it. I just haven't had the time to knit because I've been so focused on the holiday stuff. And I literally started these like... Not this particular project, but so many of the ones I've done already. I pretty much started in January, February, um, just to get, get a leg up because of how many people I have to knit for. Or I don't really have to knit any of this. I could just buy them something, but I love it. I love that I can make something with my hands, show it to my family. They wear it. They appreciate it. And, you know, it's, it's the time it, that goes into it that I think makes it so special. And, yeah, so I, I want to keep doing this for them, um, even if it is sometimes very time-consuming. But the finished project, if I do it the right way, is, is very much rewarding. And even if I don't do it the right way, I've learned a lot, and I know what to do better the next time. So... It's a win-win all around, but it's darn expensive, which is why I'm so grateful my coworker gave me yarn like this that I can use and that I don't have to open up my wallet as often if I don't have to. Um, also coming up, um, my partner found out that his friend is having a boy, and uh, the couple was Japanese. And I wanted to knit them a blanket, a baby blanket that was shades of green and cream. Um, I have this pattern I found, and it looks pretty doable. It's an easy one. I filtered Ravelry to make sure it was easy 
Um, but considering it's they're having the baby in January, um, I wanted to make sure I got it done in time. So we'll see. All right. So I haven't knit too much more, but we're making some progress here. I'll keep going with this and see what next week's project will be. But uh, let me know. I'm going to try to add a poll here. Um, but if not, um, tell me in the comments if you think you want uh, one big haul video that will probably be a little bit later in the month uh, when I get everything or a couple pieces as I have things that are already ready to show and tell and then as I get more later, let me know what you'd prefer. So again, thanks so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.